I graduated film school back in 2007, and to this day, I'm still so upset that all that time in film school, they did not teach you even for 10 minutes how to make money when you graduate film school, right? They taught you how to be a filmmaker, go to LA, somehow you're one of 10,000 to make it, and that somehow justified film school. But ever since I graduated, I was really obsessed with figuring out, wait a minute, I don't want to get a regular job. I don't want to work for a video production company. I'm not really sure if making a movie in LA is ever going to work out. So how do I make money in the meantime? And that's why I create these videos to hopefully share with you what I've learned in 15 years of working in video production and the last decade or so of running a video production company. So like a lot of people that went to film school with me, right when we graduated, we started a video production company because we thought that's what you do. You create your own company. We couldn't even figure out how to get a job because that's not really what they taught you in film school, right? So after we went and we found some uh, places that created business cards. So we picked some random business name. I think my first one was called Exposure Films, uh, just from Lens Exposure. And then I created a fancy business card that looked like a lens. I think I spent $150 on my first batch which was more money than I should have spent on anything at that time. And then I basically learned a little bit of coding, put a website together, put it out there. At the time, I think Facebook was around, so I shared it on Facebook and nothing happened. I got no work whatsoever. I think I got a couple of like weddings from it um, just because I knew the people that were getting married from Facebook. So then I was like, okay, well, this is not working. What's the next step? And this is what happens to almost everyone, okay? The first thing they always find when they figure out how to grow a business is they figure out, okay, I have to find some sort of a list of potential clients and they look up that list. Maybe they buy the list or they could scrape it from the internet, put it together. And then they either find emails or phone numbers and either call those people or email those people saying, hey, you wanna hire me? <laughs> I mean, the email is more in depth than that. But basically right now, today, I got seven emails like that trying to sell me SEO and website services or something, right? Most of them went to my spam, couple of them didn't, and I blocked those email addresses. So I know that's the way that is the most common way to approach growing a business, and that's exactly the first thing I did. But I made two big mistakes. One was I just got a random list of small businesses with no sort of pitch to that specific target audience, right? Small business is... I mean, there's millions of small businesses just in the US, right? Maybe just a million is where I live around Chicago. So that's just not a good target audience anyway. Then I think at some point I narrowed it down because I was going after, I think at that time, dentists. And uh, again, that worked. I got a couple of clients, but I literally was trying to do this with hundreds. So I was like, wait a minute, there's something wrong. I'm not really converting. What do I need to do? And I gotta say, if you've ever tried cold calling, it's probably the worst thing ever. It's just, I hated every second of doing it, but I just, it's like, well, this is the way to do it. Then at the time I bought some expensive seminar on sales and the guy just said, hey, it's a, it's a numbers game. Um, if, you, if you're getting one out of a hundred, if you make a hundred calls and you get one client, you're doing pretty decent. I was like, wait a minute. I only had a list of like 400. And I think I was doing these videos for like 1500 bucks. The math just didn't add up. Again, this is a long time ago. This is before I had a video production company, a, a real video production company. This is just what I called a video production company at the time. Then I was like, okay, well, this doesn't work. What else can I do? And someone told me, oh, you should go to your city's chamber of commerce. Like each little city, not the one in Chicago, just these local suburbs I was living in at the time. They have different chambers of commerce where different business owners, local business owners go and you should mingle. And I had my fancy business cards anyway, right? So I went to those and I started handing out my business cards or at least trying to hand out my business card. The only problem was I'm sort of an introvert. I couldn't figure out, well, how do I break into this conversation? You know, at, you know, I'm in my early or whatever, I was 24, 25 years old. And these guys are showing up in suits. You know, I'm showing up like this, wearing a hat and a t-shirt. I was like, okay, well, this was dumb. This is not at all my scene. And I couldn't break into these conversations. And then even the few people I talked to, 
it just was like out of the blue. I was like, I don't even know how do I tell them I make videos and like, how do I figure out if they need a video for their business? Okay, so I tried this again because I was so desperate to try to make one of these things work. So I never immediately gave up on something. I tried it and sometimes I got one or two clients from whatever I was trying. But I hated doing every single thing, cold calling, cold emailing. I started this cold emailing campaign. I don't know if, I think at the time it was okay to do it. I'm pretty sure it's illegal now to just buy a list and cold email people. But at the time I remember I got on a call one time with from a cold email. They actually followed up, called me just to yell at me on the phone for sending him a, an email. <laughs> So I was like, okay, this is definitely not going to work no matter what I'm doing. And at the time, the only really game in town was Google ads. Like social media was younger, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram wasn't even around. And Facebook, you know, I don't think they had their ad platform or you really didn't think of it as a B2B kind of business to business kind of venture. And then LinkedIn, I was trying, I was running some ads. I figured that out a little bit, but again, I gave up on that too. It just wasn't uh, working because it took a big investment up front to really get clients from LinkedIn at the time. The whole point of the video is eventually, after trying all those things, and I, I just wanted to explain that story because a lot of people I talk to that have just started a video production company are frustrated because the first thing or the second thing they're doing didn't work. I tried almost everything I could think of. There's a bunch of other things I just uh, didn't write down here on my script, but I'm sure there were a bunch of other things I tried too, okay? So then what I did and what I ended up working and what I do to this day for all the things that I've done with all my businesses is by creating organic content that answers very specific questions. And then when people find that content, if the content has a call to action, those leads are far better than anything I've ever tried, okay? I definitely teach ads as probably the most primary thing I teach for getting clients. But the problem with ads, if you're brand new and if you're younger and you don't really have much to spend into an ad system, is again, it's expensive. And two, you have to convert at a pretty high rate for you to not give up. I remember running ads early on, I would give up so fast because if I had a $300 ad budget and that didn't give me a 3000 clients, $3,000 client, I just said, okay, well, this doesn't work. Let me do the next thing. And I just kept shutting up ads before they actually even started working or before I figure out how to make my ads better, right? So with organic content, this is how it works and this is how it worked for me and how I use it now. Back then, what I did was I used, I think there were a couple of uh, different platforms for SEO back then. I think one was SEO Moz. I think it's called Moz now, where it basically teaches you uh, SEO and it basically teaches you keyword search. So I was like, okay, what are small businesses searching for? I should basically make blog posts answering those specific questions. And I made it all around video marketing, right? Because I, I don't want to answer everything a, a small business asks for, right? Like how to make an LLC is not what I should be answering probably at an early stage. But video marketing was, so at the time, I had made a blog post called 35 websites to submit your videos to, to be found in search for a small business. I don't remember the exact title, but what that blog post single-handedly was getting like two, 3000 views per day. A lot of it were the wrong views, right? Because it wasn't very targeted to small business, but small businesses did find me. And I had a call to action. If you want to get a professional marketing video made, click here. And then he set up a call with me, basically. That's what I had on that one blog post. And again, this blog post was maybe my 17th or 18th blog post that took off. The first 17 got like zero views. And this is with me trying SEO all the time, okay? And this is Google back in uh, 10 years ago or so. Now what I do is I've taken that same, act, what I learned from that whole experience, and I now do it with YouTube. Okay, now this channel where you're watching, I have six YouTube channels, right? But they're all designed for different things. This one is just because I was so frustrated as a filmmaker 
to try to figure out how to make money. And I think I've figured out how to do that enough to be able to teach it. And I know enough filmmaking skills to teach it. So this is for that, right? This is not really part of my bigger business plan. Let me show you an example here. Here's an example, okay? Small business owners or really business owners of all kind and marketing directors were searching how to run ads on Instagram. So I made a video called how to run ads on Instagram and I update this every single year, right? This is the video. And it shows up number one right here on YouTube and it has 90,000 views, right? Now this has the potential to get a lot more views and I'm not telling you to go make this one video because it's gonna be really hard to outrank me on this video. But within the video, I don't know if I did it with this one or the Facebook one, but basically I have a call to action if you want me to make your Instagram ads with high end video click here or link in the description or something like that. And that's literally just one of my channels and just one example of what you could do to get leads that could turn into clients for your business, right? And again, this works for lots of different businesses, but specifically to video production, I would find a niche where you want to make videos. Let's say gym owners, right? There are so many gym owners, honestly, it's mind blowing. I just looked up around me just to kind of before I made this video. And basically, gym owners struggle to get people to their gym, right? And again, they do the same kind of thing that you're doing, right? They're trying to figure out how do I run ads? How do I put up billboards, whatever they got to do to get clients. So what you could do is you could make content showing specifically gym owners or even maybe personal trainers how to get clients and that's a YouTube channel and within that YouTube channel you make all kinds of different content that is laser focused right it's extremely difficult to get a video to rank number one that says how to run Instagram ads but it's far easier to make a video called how to run Instagram ads for personal trainers to get clients yes it's niche down that channel, actually, I have a bigger business model of running a different platform called Halfinity. That's a whole different thing. But my whole point with this is because this worked for me for Google, I discovered it with YouTube. And YouTube, because we all have the video skills to make better videos than most people on YouTube, we could really stand out much easier than Google Blogs used to be. I had no idea how to write. So I had, you know, I was competing with a lot of people in the world of blog writing. But in the world of video, I know how to make videos, right? And they don't even have to be that fancy. I just have a prime lens on here on my camera and I have a shotgun overhead and I'm, you know, a couple of lights and that's it. And this is far less production than anything I do for clients. So I set this up and then I make these videos that turn into leads. Now, some turn into leads for my video production work. Some leads go to my sales uh, course sales some go to just you know getting um, visitors to my website but i use youtube now as this engine because these leads already saw you deliver value for free on youtube so they're much more likely to trust what you have to say if your video was good and what you told them was useful it's not really one out of a hundred that you should be selling when that happens it should be far more than that and even if it's one out of a hundred it's a, it's a lot harder from a list to get 100 people or from cold calling 100 people. You saw that video had 90,000 potential people, right? Yes, I'm not going to get 1% of those people to get me a video because it's not that specific of a video. But even a fraction of 1% is still better than anything else I've tried. And it requires far, far less work. That video took me an hour and a half. It took me years to rank videos number one on YouTube. And I had to do a lot of things to figure out how to do that. Same thing with the back in the Google days with SEO tactics that got my, uh, my blog post to show up, number one. But I figured it out, right? And it was great because as an introvert, it did not require me to go up and shake people's hand and somehow sell them in person to a five ten thousand dollars video project. I do have another training that walks you through step by step how to kind of craft a YouTube channel and use it for your business. So again, that's really a thing that's connected to my other business, but I did want to put a link below if you wanna watch that training. It's more a, a strategy for content. And I think once you figure that out, you could not only rank videos on top of YouTube and Google, a lot of my videos show up on Google too, but you could really figure out how to use it to get clients with a warm lead, not just a cold email lead, not just a cold call, a much better way to convert. So I know this was a little bit longer, but I hope you watched it through and you find it useful. 
Again, organic content could be your best friend when it comes to getting clients for your video production business. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe for videos just like this posted every single week, and I'll see you next time.